Hello, I'm William and I'm with Kyle. And on this episode of This or That, uh, we're gonna talk about high nutrient systems versus low nutrient systems. It's gonna be a fun one. That's right. So let's get right into it. Uh, what is, what would you consider a high nutrient system and what would you consider a low nutrient system? So I would consider a high nutrient system something that has elevated nutrients. Typically when I'm thinking about nitrates specifically, I would say anything above 10 and phosphates, anything above the 0.1 range. Once you're there elevated, you got higher nutrients. Um, which we'll get into why that might be good, why it might be bad. Uh, low nutrients, I would say, are going to be like super low. Uh, I would say probably looking at those 10 year old stats where everyone's like trying to get zero, zero or as grass to zero as they can. Uh, so there's pros and cons to both, uh, but I think we should dive into it. Um, just to get started, where do you usually keep your tanks at? Uh, actually, contrary to this tank behind us, I usually like to keep ultra low nutrient systems. Um, I'm a big gear junkie, and so I really like. Uh, adding a bunch of equipment to the tank, and that usually results in low nutrient systems. Um, but this guy back behind us here is actually a very high nutrient system, which always surprises me, but it's probably the bio load in there. It's because you feed it a lot. I've seen you feed these Antheas yes. multiple times a day. Yeah, so that's kind of how you get a, a high nutrient system, right? It's a high bio load mixed with a high feeding because um, you're putting a lot of nutrients into the system. Or you're keeping things really simple, don't have a lot of gear, don't have enough filtration to keep up with what you're doing, so. That's another way to get high nutrients. Um, I'm also in the same boat. I typically go lower nutrient. I don't do ultra low nutrient, but I do like a nice sweet spot. I typically aim for my phosphates to be around 0.03, so it's really low. And my nitrates, I like, to, I like three to five. So I wouldn't consider that high or low. I would just kind of smack dab in the middle, so I got least way to go. Sweet spot, right? Both ways. Yeah. Um, but I think there's pros and cons to both. Um, if we're looking at a high nutrient system, what would you say some advantages are of that system? Uh, well, one of the more selfish advantages is that you can definitely put more things in it. Um, you can add a lot more fish. Uh, it's not a big deal when you add another fish because your, your system's already high in nutrients. You're already adding a lot of food into it. Uh, so that's one of the main benefits for me. Uh, another one is definitely that uh, you can keep a lot of uh, coral and inverts as well, same thing. Yeah, I've also noticed with coral specifically, you get a little bit better coloration when the nutrients are higher. Yeah. Because uh, the only algae within the tissue is able to get more nutrients readily available. It doesn't have to really catch a lot of food. It's there. Brings up the vibrancy of the color a little bit more, in my experience, when you're doing a, a good maintenance schedule with the tank, as well as like all the trace elements. Right. I think the coloration is a little bit better, especially in some more um, niche corals, like torches, gonies, stuff like that, that really thrive in like a dirtier tank. That's I wouldn't say it's dirty necessarily, but just dirty right. nutrient-wise. The right kinds of nutrients is really what's yeah. important there. Um, I would say that this tank here actually is a, a great example. These acros were growing quite slowly uh, until the nutrients got bumped up, yeah, uh, and then they started really growing quite quickly. It's been taking off a lot recently. Yes. It's crazy. Yes, it's, it's huge. Um, let's go to jump into low nutrient systems. Um, what are some advantages that you see with that? I think for me and the reason I run low nutrient systems is it's really easy to add anything that's new and to recover anything that's maybe unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, I find that it's super easy. You can go to a fish store, pick up basically any coral you want, any fish you want, um, and it'll acclimate really well to a low nutrient system. That's good. Um, another thing I would say is you're probably gonna have an easier time managing past LGs um, because even though the, the elevated nitrate phosphate might be good for coloration of your corals, it's also fuel and fertilizer for any pest algae that you don't want, or if you happen to get uh, macroalgae from your sump that spills into the display tank, I'm thinking Ulva, if you're using oh, yeah. uh, Calorpa or anything like that, you're gonna get fuel to grow like a wildfire in my yes. experience. So yeah, you're definitely gonna need some good grazers in a high nutrient system, but that kind of goes hand in hand with a high nutrient system. It means you can add some things like tangs or fox faces. Uh, urchins are another great example. Uh, they do actually create quite a lot of nutrients themselves, but they do manage the algae a lot. That's how this tank, even though it's very high in nutrients, uh, stays so clean. Yeah, I, I'll say another advantage of a low nutrient system is um, you can achieve it both if you're a gear junkie or if you like things simple. It just means you have to accordingly stock your tank and feed your tank. Absolutely. Um, so I think sometimes a low nutrient system can be low maintenance the way I run things. If I'm thinking low nutrient system, I'm thinking maybe something like a little 15 gallon all in one. Got like one clump, like one fish, yep. maybe a pair of clump fish if I'm feeling like a little more, want more than just one fish, but I'm feeding very sparingly and feeding pellets like maybe once a day. Yep. Um, have like no equipment. So maintenance is like super easy. I just clean the glass once a week, which yeah. I think is huge, especially if you're really busy. Um, better than having to clean the glass to see your tank 
three or four times a week when you have a high nutrient system. So yeah, and the key to a, a low nutrient system in a smaller, simple tank is the biology, right? It's the, it's the microbiome. So making sure you start with a good uh, a bacteria starter or live rock or live sand starter, uh, and getting that biodiversity into that system is really going to be a key in keeping that nutrient level low uh, with a simple system. Definitely. Yeah. So we're talking about a lot about the advantages for both. Uh, let's talk about the cons of both, starting with the uh, high nutrient systems. What do you think are some disadvantages of running something that's a high nutrient system? Right. Something like this tank, I keep pointing at it, um, is a, it's a great example, though. Uh, it has very high nutrients. I'd say it runs at about 25 to 40 nitrate on, a, on any given day, which is really that's high. That's high for most people. Yes. Yeah. And we're doing auto water changes and everything on this system. And then the phosphates run quite high, too, you know, about 0.2. Uh, almost every single day. So this is a very high nutrient system. And one of the struggles that we have with it is adding new corals. Like I mentioned in ultra low nutrients, it's very easy to add corals. But if you're getting an acro from maybe a high end source, they're probably running low nutrients in their system and adding it to here, it browns out almost instantly and it takes quite a while for it to color back up. It's quite frustrating. Yeah, there is that fine line or edge of the high nutrients where if you get too high nutrients you're not bringing out color you're bringing out heavy brown coloration because the tuna is always like growing like crazy within the coral tissue so be careful if you don't like brown corals probably don't want to run super high nutrients uh um, definitely i'll say another disadvantage is i just touched on the glass cleaning get to way more frequently because that film algae grows like wildfire yep it's all over you can scrape the glass and by the end of the day, you're starting to see it grow back. It's crazy. Yeah, even with enough sand sifters, it doesn't matter. You still got to you know, stir your sand up occasionally. Uh, you get that film elf everywhere in a high nutrient system. Uh, but what about low nutrient systems? Um, so something that I would say is a disadvantage is coral coloration can be a little bit drab, especially if you're running acros. Yeah. If you get like really close to zero, I'm thinking like those old school KZ tanks where everything looks pastel-y. Yes. It's like borderline, like it looks like it's about to bleach, but it's not actually bleaching. That is something that I don't personally like. I like a really rich sure. coloration in my corals, so I would consider that a disadvantage. Yep. Um, another disadvantage I would say is uh, people not exactly proven, but low nutrients, especially in newer tanks, can be tied to dinoflagellates, which is a huge headache for new and experienced hobbyists alike. Definitely. And that's yep. just a big road bump, especially if you're a new hobbyist. Not a great way to have your toe dipped into the aquarium hobby. No, definitely not. One thing I've also experienced is uh, with those low nutrient systems, a lot of times your uh, elements are also a little lower than, than you want. Um, so you add a lot of uh, elements by hand and that can get kind of expensive yeah. uh, to keep adding all of them, you know, little, the little bottles from KZ or whatever you end up doing. Um, it, it gets, it adds up. And then also because of that, if you're not adding the right balance of them, sometimes your corals can become deficient and will slow down in growth. So definitely it's, it's a, a more, uh, you have to focus really carefully and maybe do ICP tests uh, if you're going to do a low nutrient system. Yeah. So there's pros and cons to both. Um, I think we should wrap it up with kind of giving our own opinion on where we would go um, for anyone else that's setting up a tank. Uh, what should we aim for as far as nutrients go? Yeah, I think if in your average system, if you're sticking below 0.1 phosphate, uh, you're going to have a lot easier time. And anywhere below 20 uh, nitrate is going to be good. Uh, just stick above zero for yeah. your numbers. I am in the same camp. Um, if you want to run a higher elevated nutrient system, um, I would always recommend doing that later on in the tank's life. Um, I don't recommend starting that too early. Give your corals, add your corals, give them the chance to like really settle in, grow, and then start slowly letting it increase. Absolutely. Um, so don't don't start off high nutrient. I would not recommend starting off zero nutrient. Um, just mid range, and then kind of tweak and see how your corals react. Your corals are going to be the best indicator of tank health, regardless of what parameter we're talking about. Um, but specifically nutrients, run it middle road, especially early on, and then bump it up or bump it down depending on how you want to go. Absolutely, and focus on that biodiversity in that tank. Yeah. That's the the key to success with nutrients. Yeah, I think that wraps it up. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>